48 chefs from across the UK are putting their reputations on the line in a bid to become professional MasterChef champion. Six more hopefuls are competing to impress Judge Greg Wallace, renowned chef Monica Galletti, and Michelin starred Marcus Waring. This is the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. It's my time to shine now. I have been prepping like crazy. I feel as ready as I'm ever going to be. I feel like my career has, has really been leading up to, to this point. Do dare to dream. I think I could win. The competition is back on. I want bold, I want brilliant, and I want beautifully cooked food. Who is going to emerge as our next champion? I'm really looking forward to this. We have six brand new chefs to meet. First up, of course, they've got to face the skills test. Three of them will be doing yours, Monica. Three of them yours, Marcus. Mm. What are you going to get them to do? I'm going to ask the chefs to cook us a croque monsieur and serve it with a dressed salad. Croque monsieur, a sandwich. Yep. Toasted, ham and cheese. But knowing you, <laughs> it's going to be more than just ham and cheese. The skill is to make a, a fabulous bechamel which is a classic white sauce. It's the base of lasagna, cauliflower cheese. Right, how long are you going to give the chefs to do this? I'm going to give them 15 minutes. Let's go. OK. Start off with the milk. and We're just going to get that heated up. I think all our chefs will know what a bechamel sauce is, and I think they should all be able to make one. As I remember when I do it, melt the butter, add the flour, until you get like a, like a ball. No, 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 no. You just cook it out to a, to a thick paste. How do you know when the flour's cooked out? Taste. It's the only way. If you, can, if you can't taste the flour, it's cooked. If you can taste the flour, it's not cooked. It is as simple as that. So the milk's always got to be warm, isn't it? Otherwise, it just yep. won't incorporate the flour and butter. If you don't put the milk in bit by bit, you're going you're gonna to end up with lumps. They've got to be able to make a bechamel, haven't they? It's one of the, the simplest sauces yeah. that, that you learn when you start cooking. What consistency do you, do, do you want yours? Well, runny enough to spread, thick enough to not fall out the sandwich, yeah, right? that's right. It's actually that. Salt, pepper, French mustard, and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Put some cheddar cheese that I'm going to put inside the sauce. Now we're going to slice our ham. The fat for me is important because there's a huge amount of flavour in the fat and it also helps to keep it all moist as well. So we start off with the white sauce. A little bit of French mustard. The gruyere really lifts this sandwich. I'm now going to fry it in a pan of butter. <laughs> we're going to colour it and then we're going to bake it in the oven and get it cooking and oozing full of butter. That is super yummy. Look at that. Why do you now want to put that in the oven? Because that looks ready to me. Everything in the centre of that sandwich is cold and it needs warming up. How long is it in there? It's going to be in there for four or five minutes to get nice right. and warm. And in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to make a, uh, a, little, a little salad. And what I want to sit next to it is a lovely, crunchy green salad with a dressing of their choosing. You want the acid of the salad to break down the richness of the, of the sandwich. I'm just going to do a very basic, simple French dressing with a Dijon mustard, salt. I'm going to use white wine vinegar. Even though the, the, the key thing here is, is, is about making the bechamel and, and turning that into the, to the sandwich, you know, a side salad has to also have as much care and attention to mm. it. Salad's been picked, dressing is made. Now we're going to take out the sandwich. <laughs> How are you doing? Cutting it into three, chef? Yeah, one, two. No, three. Oh, you could have some as well. I would have some as well. Very, very happy with that. There you are, croque monsieur, 
and a green salad. Right, we know exactly what we want. Let's see what our chefs are going to do. Should we get them in? <laughs> Let's do it. First up is Matt, a 29-year-old sous chef working for a private residence in Surrey. Being a private chef definitely comes with its challenges. You've got to adapt to what the, uh, the client wants. Basically, it, it can vary all the time. You do uh, dinner parties, buffet events, barbecues, teppanyakis. So you name it, you name it, we do it, basically. The, the food I love is um, Vietnamese, Thai, Chinese, Japanese. It's just clean flavors. But at the same time, I was brought up on, on French classics, so I love all of that. The skill says I'm terrified, genuinely terrified. But I, I like to back myself a little bit without being arrogant, because you, you never know what might come up and might stump you. Matt, welcome to Master Chef. Don't forget to breathe, please, Chef. <laughs> OK. It's a skills challenge. This particular challenge was set by Marcus. I would like you to make us a croque monsieur and serve it with a dress salad. Cool. Perfect. Uh, how's that sound? Yeah, good, good. Um, I've lived in France for a few years, so hopefully I should know how to make a croque monsieur. 15 minutes, croque monsieur, dress salad, off you go. Perfect. OK. You said you were living in France. Where were you? I did a few ski seasons. Uh, it's in the Alps, um, and then I did a yacht season, which was in uh, Antibes and Monaco. So nice and chilled out compared to normal chefing hours in London. Right, Matt, what are we up to? Just adding the milk to the, um, to the bechamel. And the bread? Uh, thank you very much. I need to check on the bread. Matt, you're halfway. You've got seven minutes left. Why MasterChef, then? Um, because I watch it every year. Um, you know, I don't want to be one of those people that just sits on the sofa and being like, that could have been me or I could have done that. I might as well test myself. Three minutes, Matt. All right, you put your yep. sandwich together. Quick, 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 quick. OK? Yep. All done? Yep. Well done. Matt, how would you find that? Um, I didn't do as well as I thought I should do, um, but at the end of the day, hopefully, it tastes nice. I wanted a rich, cheesy sauce, full of cheese, mustard, and the Worcestershire sauce. I find the white sauce a little bit flat. I find the sandwich dry. What you need to do is put it all together as a sandwich and then toast it as one. Since you've worked in, in France a few years, I thought you were going to smash this one out of the park. Bechamel sauce, if you take a big mouthful of it, it's a bit flowery. I would have liked more of the cheese through it because that's what Croque Monsieur is about, so I want to taste more of that cheese through it. I can clearly taste the mustard you put in there. And I like that. It gives it a sharpness. I also like the dressing on your salad. That's an OK sandwich. It's a little dry. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. <laughs> At the start of the competition, I just wish I would have done a little bit better. It's not devastating, but it's definitely not great. 34-year-old Alice is a senior chef de partie working in an Italian restaurant in New York. My style of food is kind of, it's got a bit of this and that. 
I've got a bit of Italian influence, a lot of French influence cuisine, and uh, where I'm from, Zimbabwe, so it's really a fusion. I really enjoy cooking. It just brings joy to me. I wake up motivated each day, knowing that I'm doing something I'm, I'm really passionate about. Hello, Alice. Hello. Welcome to MasterChef. I would like you to make us a croque monsieur and serve it with a dressed salad. I don't know what that is. It's a hot sandwich. Inside it, we've got cheese sauce, ham, toasted or fried, and serve with a salad with some of the leaves in front of you and a dressing of whatever you like. OK. 15 minutes, off you go, Alice. Can you tell me what it is you're doing there? So I think I'll just uh, make something like a roux first to start. And then from there, I'll add cheese to it and then uh, add my sliced ham. You're, gonna, you're just going to serve one slice, yeah? Is that not going to be enough? <laughs> um, well, I'm not a chef, but I've had sandwiches before. Yeah, I guess. Well, no, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> now that you said a sandwich. <laughs> and when was the last time you made a roux? Uh, a few days ago. <laughs> a few days ago? Yes. Oh, good. You're halfway, you've got seven minutes to go. How's that toast going? You've got a couple of minutes, OK? You need to bring this dish together. Are you finished? I hope You've so. got about 30 seconds left. Well done. Alice, how did you find that? It was a bit difficult, cos I wasn't sure what I was doing. Well, at least you did it with a smile on your face. <laughs> <laughs> the salad is not served in the sandwich, it's served on the side. But what you've done wrong with the roux is you've not cooked out the flour. You've added the milk in too quickly, it's lumpy and it's not cooked. However, you can taste the cheese through it, and you've got a lovely sweet dressing. I like the sweet dressing you put on your leaves. Though you didn't know what it is you're doing, you sort of got the gist of it. You know, you didn't give up. Alice, thank you very much. We'll see you again. Off you go. Thank you. <laughs> I like the little scream on the way out. <laughs> ah! Wish I could go again. <laughs> but it's fine. The final chef to face Marcus's test is 33-year-old Andrew, a Royal Navy chef based in Portsmouth. Working on a ship is a really dynamic environment. You're, you're const it's constantly changing. One day you could be cooking for 1,200 people. The next day, you could be cooking for um, a small fine dining event for events engagement. You've always got to be on your toes. Anything can happen at a moment's notice, and you've got to create something out of nothing. I've got complete creative control of what I do in my menus, so it's a real good opportunity to push myself and play with different things that I want to. I think I'm quite methodical. You really have to be organised. You have to know exactly what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. I'm going to draw on everything that I've, I've learned over my 12 years and really go for it. I'm going to put 100% into it, yeah. Hi, Andrew. Hello, Jeff. I'd like you to make for us a croque monsieur and serve it with a dressed salad. Yes, Chef. How does that sound to you? 
Yep, happy with that. 15 minutes, off you go. I'm going to add some aromatics to the milk to get some flavour through there. Oh, good. Good, good, good. When did you last make or eat one of these sandwiches? It's been a while, 12 months. Why did you make the last one? I think I just made for myself at home. <laughs> it's the, the kind of thing I like to eat. What got you into cookery, then? So I never cooked a day in my life until I joined the Navy, so everything I know I've learned while I've been inside. No more milk, is there? Do you want some more milk? If I can, yeah. you are making room for a whole ship, right? Yeah, I am, yeah. Right. <laughs> we were looking at the amount of flour you were pouring in, wondering why you were making so much. Yeah, I'm used to cooking big portions, so I went a little heavy-handed there. I'm going to end up with a gallon of roux here, aren't I? <laughs> You're halfway, chef. All right, thank you. How's your bechamel looking? It needs a. Uh, it needs more milk again. It's still it's still growing. Should have thought of that a long time ago. You've got five minutes, Andrew. We're doing Thank all you. right. Yep, I'm just going to finish it up now. You've built up the sandwich. Where are you putting the sauce? Over here. Over yeah. the top. And that's going in the oven, is it? It is, yeah. I'm going to grate a bit more cheese on the top. <laughs> and bake it in the oven. Go on. Might not be healthy, but it'll be delicious. Yeah, we don't care in here. Dress salad, what are we doing? So I'm just going to shred up some of the baby jam, uh, mix it with microherb, rocket, dress it up with basic vinaigrette. Andrew, you got 30 seconds, Chef. Can you plate it up, please? Yes. There we go. All done? All done, Chef. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I love that you poured the bechamel over the top of it and then grated more cheese. I just wish you put more of that bechamel inside the sandwich. There's a real tang of salty cheese on it. You added some butter, you got it in the oven. And it's unctuous. It's getting there. Andrew, you're so close. You know, you're really, really close. You're a couple of steps away from almost doing exactly the same as what I did. Look forward to seeing you in the next round. Off Thank you. you. Go. Thank you. He did all right. <laughs> he did OK. I've achieved the aim. I made what was, what was necessary, so hopefully that's going to shed me in some good light. We've seen three already, Marcus. Have a go at your skills test. Monica, this is yours. What are you going to get the chefs to do? I'm going to get our chefs to make us a vibrant green pea risotto. How long are you going to give them to, to make this risotto? 20 minutes. A risotto in 20 minutes. That's all you need. Wow. OK, let's see you do it. First thing we need to do is to get the rice on. I'm going to use a little bit of onion. I want the white onion because, you know, you don't want to see any colour through this rice. So, onion softened with a bit of oil, then the rice, coat the oil around the rice, then a glug of white wine. So that gets the flavour in there as well. Yeah? That's right. Give me. Yeah, look at Give you. Me. Can you help me? I've only got 20 minutes. So as that wine reduces, I start to add some stock to it. It's add, reduce, add, reduce, add, reduce, and the intensity of the flavours just start to grow and grow and grow. I like just a touch of bite and not so creamy. But Monica, you got. Cream on your board. That's not for your risotto, is it? 
No, 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 no. Ah. Sorry, sorry, Marcus. And I'm just using it to, to cook the frozen peas, which have been thawed out, to make a puree, and then folding that through the risotto. Ah. You're not going to make a vibrant green risotto unless you puree those frozen peas. You're just not going to get it. That's a beautiful green. Beautiful, beautiful green. All I've got here is some fresh peas, which I'm going to fold through at the end of my risotto as well. It's really important uh, that the chefs, while they're doing the other jobs, that they keep coming back, they stir this and they taste it. And now this is what I want to see. I want to see this risotto change colour. Look at that. Look at that. So just some parmesan, and I'm doing the parmesan off the heat. This is just going to, to melt into it and really bring this risotto together. Okay. And I'm ready to plate. Mm, I love that, love that, love that. I'm just finishing it with some fresh uh, pea shoots. And there we have it, my vibrant green pea risotto. Wonderful. I'm pretty sure they can make a pea risotto. Can they make a pea-coloured risotto? Should we get the chefs in? Let's do it. First to face Monica's test is Yorkshire-born Curtis, who currently works in a Mediterranean restaurant in London. My style of food is mixed modern European food. I like doing lots of French cuisine, but I like to do twists on food. I've done a few competitions. I've done Young Yorkshire Chef of the Year, and I was the winner of that. And I think that will make me stand out from the competition. I would like you to make us a vibrant green pea risotto. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel positive about it. Excellent. 20 minutes, off you go. All right, go, go, go. How are you going to make your risotto green? Uh, I'm going to make a pea, pea puree. You've had seven minutes. What food do you love? I love French cooking. French is probably the best. Marcus hates French food. Really? No. no, no. no. <laughs> I was going to say <laughs> Curtis, was it always your plan to become a chef? Uh, yeah, cooking with my grandma. She inspired me. Does your grandmother know that you're a chef because of her? Uh, no, she doesn't, actually. She does now. Yeah. <laughs> You've got 30 seconds. Are you ready to plate? Yeah. Finish off with pea shoots. All done? Yeah. Well done. Two seconds to go. Your risotto is, is, is pretty green. You knew you needed the puree to get the colour through the risotto. I like that. You know what? That's not half bad. You know, a couple of minutes more and the rice would have been perfect. What I loved about the way you worked was just that attention to that pan didn't end from the start to finish. Lovely, sweet flavour of pea and lots of butter through it, good seasoning and, of course, plenty of Parmesan cheese. I like the way you worked. Definitely can taste peas through this. I see some potential in you, Curtis. You're 21 years old. 
you know? This is the toughest part, is to walk in here and face us for the first 20 minutes. Relax. Off you go. <laughs> He's good. Yeah. He's all right. He's, He's good. Right. He'll be all right. I'm feeling a bit better for it, so I've been done with to get good feedback from then was happy and positive to me. Next is Ben, a 33-year-old senior chef de partie working in a fine dining restaurant in Sussex. I've only been a chef for three and a half years. Before that, I was a builder. I got ill, got Crohn's, so I was in hospital for six months. I kind of made a decision to myself that did I want to go back to be a builder or did I want to do something that I love to do? You know, the hours are strenuous and you, you live off coffee, basically, and passion. But, you know, I'd never regretted my decision. I'm not here to, like, muck about. I'm going to put everything into it and see what happens. You all right, Ben? Yeah, good, thank you. I would like you to make us a vibrant green pea risotto. OK, yeah. Made risottos before? Uh, yes. Excellent. You're going to have 20 minutes. Off you go. Thank you. So what, what are you going to do? How are you going to cook the risotto? Uh, so just a bit of butter and stock, first of all. Cook that out a little bit, and then just keep adding stock, seasoning. Might add a touch of cream, not too sure yet. So what sort of kitchen are you working in now? Uh, so it's a, it's a fine dining restaurant based in uh, West Sussex. And what's your, what's your ambition, Ben? I think everyone's ambition is to have their own place one day. So, yeah, fingers crossed that that happens. You've had seven minutes. Right, is the rice cooking? Yes, it is, yeah. Thank you. We wanted a green risotto. How are you going to make it green? By adding peas and pea shoots and everything that's green on the, on the table, basically. Six minutes left. OK, thank you. Are you done? Yes, thank you, yeah. You have three minutes left. <sighs> to make a pea risotto, a vibrant green, we tend to make it a puree to fold through. You've put peas in it, but it's not the pea risotto I was wanting. Ben, it's not cooked enough, it's too claggy. It's, it's not a good risotto, unfortunately. Your methods are, are completely wrong. Yeah. What you did was bring some butter and some stock up to the boil and then added your, your rice into it. Yes. And it just boiled and boiled. And it's so hard for the rice to then absorb that liquid. I don't know how much risotto you've made, but that doesn't mean you don't know how to make other things. Mm. Chef, we'll see you in the next round. Thank you. Yeah, he's going to kick himself. I'm not happy with that being the start to my competition, but on a plus, things can only... Surely things can only get better from here. Last up is Georgie, who has been a chef for four years and now caters for a private bank in London. We are a team of four and we're cooking lunches for about 26 people a day and 
with big canopy events in the evening, sometimes dinners as well. I did give up a successful career in recruitment to do this, and it was a huge risk at the time, but I've never looked back. I've never done a cooking competition before, but all I can do is stay true to myself and my beliefs. I am very competitive by nature. I don't like losing. Georgie, 20 minutes, vibrant green pea risotto. Thank you. Take me through the process of making the risotto, please. Dice up my shallot. First of all, get that on and sweating. Blanch my peas and then make a puree with them. Mix through the risotto. Have you been a chef since you stopped school? No, I, I worked as a headhunter and then I trained as a chef four years ago. Wow, that's a, that's a contrast. It's quite a change. Yeah, what happened? Um, I think I'd, I'd grown up cooking. I grew up on a farm, but I really wanted to do something more practical. Georgia, you've had six minutes. Yeah. Tell me the next stages, please. I will taste my risotto to see if the rice is cooked. And then I will add some of the pea puree through it to make it green, but I'll do that at the last minute. How's that looking, Georgie? Still a few minutes off. You've got four minutes, all right? Fingers crossed for that rice. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. How many minutes do I have left now? How many would you really like, Georgie? I would probably like another six. You've got two. Oh. Georgie, is it it's done? It's very close, it's very close. So's the time. <laughs> is it working? It is working. Come on, play up, play up, play up. OK, OK. Come on! Done. Just in time. It's well seasoned. It's getting creamy because the starch is coming out of the rice. It's sweet with pea. Can taste a slight bit of acidity from the wine. It's a good job. You got the puree made. There's a lovely sweetness that sits behind the risotto. You had all the processes just right, but you just need to get that risotto rice on just a little bit quicker. I like what I'm tasting in the risotto, but it is undercooked, which is a real disappointment because watching you work, you knew exactly how to make this risotto. Not bad at all, Georgie. All right, we'll see you in the next round. Thank you. Thank you. you. I think she's pretty good. Pretty good. It was nice that they can see there is some potential there. I'm happy because it wasn't a complete disaster. There's a couple of chefs here who have got a point to prove. Mm. The rest of them, I tell you, I am really looking forward to their own dishes. Chef's good to see you back in the kitchen. This is your signature dish round. This is all about you. I wish you all the very best of luck. This is when it gets interesting, and I want to see some excitement here in this kitchen. One hour and 15 minutes to showcase your skill, your talent, your passion. At the end of this, three of you will be leaving the competition. Let's go.
The chefs I work with in the military are some of the best chefs I've ever met, so I really want to try and put us in a good light. You know, I think uh, we deserve to be considered just as good as everyone else in the restaurant industry. There's a lot of things going on in this dish that's going to help me show off, and it's all about making sure they all work together and everything comes into synergy, and that should show them my identity as a chef and what my personal style is like. So, Andrew, what are you cooking? So, I'm doing a mutt jack dish. Mm -hmm. So, mutt jack is uh, a small deer, mutt jack loin, uh, rolled in set powder with a little hot water cross pie with uh, the mutt jack trimmings and stilton with some morels, some asparagus, some baby turnips, and some pickled blackberries, which I've done myself. And a sauce of what? You must have a sauce of Yeah, it. it's a slow gin sauce, which is perfect for game. Can you do small and fine? Because you're used to doing big and quick, right? I'm used to doing big and quick, but we do a lot of small and fine in the Navy as well. We do a lot of defence engagement. We're always entertaining foreign dignitaries and VIPs, so we're required to do fine dining food on a regular basis. Is he selling it to you? He's, you've sold it. Love the sound of this dish. I really like monk jack. Rolling it with in set powder is a great idea. There's no fat on it at all, so it needs to be very careful with the cooking. Interested though about the monk jack pie with Stilton. That's an interesting combination. Pastry's got to be cooked perfectly right nice and crispy on the outside and not soggy on the bottom. This dish does sum me up as a chef because it's bringing my style of cooking, you know, Asian and French, and it's what I'm, I'm about, you know, bringing that extra twist to a dish. What's your dish, Curtis? So I'm doing a duo of lamb. I'm doing a smoked lamb cannon with a lamb belly what's going to be pan seared. And then I'm going to do a sesame glazed aubergine, finishing off my au jus with a bonito vinegar. It's got a bit of fishy in this. It's and, uh, fishy vinegar? Yeah, let's make it more Asian. And what type of wood are you using for your smoke? I'm using oak. It's just to give it that light, smoky flavour, because I don't want it to overpower the dish. Anyone tried it? My head chef, yeah, and my family. And they, they said, said it was good. So we'll see. Curtis has got the lamb belly, which he's pressure cooking, and then he's going to crisp up. He has the lamb cannon, which he's going to smoke inside a, a backpack. I'm looking forward to trying the aubergine that you can deep fry once they've been rolled in pistachio crumb. What I also like is the sesame aubergine puree. These aubergines go very, very well with lamb. The benito vinegar jus, interesting. It's a, a special type of vinegar, which is made with uh, tuna flakes. That could be the difference that makes this dish stand out. 30 minutes gone, 45 minutes left. Come on, chefs. I feel I've got to nail my signature dish. Like, there's no leeway or anything like that. It's go hard or go home. I'm bringing unique flavour combinations, something you probably wouldn't think of normally, but. Yeah, hopefully they work. What's the dish? Uh, so it's a Jerusalem artichoke bavoir, uh, raspberry jelly. Uh, I've got a sourdough crumble, salted strawberries. Got a thyme oil and birch syrup. So a bavoir, like a mousse. Yes. With Jerusalem artichokes. Yeah. Do you consider this dish to be risky? Yeah, but then. If it goes well, then it's going to tip the scales in my favour as such. If you believe in it, I hope you nail it. I, for one, am really curious to try it. I've never had Jerusalem artichoke uh, as a bavoir. The most difficult thing here is getting that bavoir set in time, but there's one thing that he's definitely done is really stand out. I certainly didn't think he was going to cook a dessert like this. It seems very unusual. This dish has been inspired by um, the smells that I grew up with. So visiting my grandfather in rural Zimbabwe, everything would be smoked using wood. And I just hope that uh, the flavors can come through in the way that I envisioned that they would.
The dish will be um, duck breast smoked with wood and chai tea, uh, served with um, confit duck leg rolled in phyllo pastry with um, a cabbage and buck choy salad. Is there, a, is there a sauce with this duck? Yes, uh, so I'm making a sauce with uh, blackcurrant and blackberries uh, and duck jus. What bits of it remind you of home? The earthiness, the smoke, all that, that's what reminds me of home. The duck leg has been comforted down and it's been wrapped in phyllo pastry. That's going to be deep fried, so I'm expecting that to be nice and crispy, but I want that duck leg to be beautiful and moist. I like the sound of the duck breast lightly smoked. But I've never had a salad of red cabbage, pak choy and blackberry, so I hope there's not too much sweetness on the plate. With the signature, it's a dish that I've been practicing now for probably the last three weeks, and it's been causing a lot of stress, so I'm pushing myself with it. I'm bringing some challenging flavors, which hopefully the judges wouldn't have had all together before. So uh, we've got a poulet de breast, um, black garlic underneath the skin, stuffed scorch leeks. It's going to have a leek puree of some braised chicken legs running through it as well. Um, some pickled jalapenos that are going to go through it as well. Poulet de breast, so, so French chicken. It sounds like quite classic to me. And then these jalapenos turn up. Jalapenos are delicious. They go well with chicken. I just thought I'd bring something else just to kind of elevate it slightly. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Good luck, very much. Mate. Thank you. Cheers. Really loving the idea of putting the black garlic underneath the, the chicken skin and, and roasting it in the oven on the crown. Do like the sound of the dish, and I'm looking forward to the jalapeno puree. I'm not sure whether it's got a place on this plate of food, but I am curious, and it sort of piques my interest. You have 20 minutes left, all right? 20 minutes, please. I'm going to be really pushed for time in the kitchen today with all the different elements that I'm serving. There's sweet, there's salty, there's crunchy, there's soft. There are different textures and tastes. So to do well today would mean the world to me. So what are you cooking for us? So you're having cannon of lamb um, with pea puree, peas, pickled beetroot, goat's cheese croquette, a Madeira sauce and some mint oil. Pretty traditional, I would say. Very traditional. Why this dish? Because it's what I cook every day and I wanted to do something I feel comfortable with. It looks to me like it matters to you that we like your food. It does. Most of the time I'm behind the scenes so I don't see the reaction. So it matters hugely today. I don't think there's many surprises on this dish, so everything that she does needs to be just right. George's lamb needs to be cooked to perfection. Georgie is making a croquette, so it's got to be lovely, golden, crispy, and that goat's cheese nice and soft and hopefully a bit runny in the middle. You have just 10 minutes left, please. 10 minutes. Chefs, you have two minutes left. Thirty seconds, last touches. That's it. Time's up. Stop. First up is Andrew. He has served sep rolled munchak loin, a munchak and stilton pie, morels, baby turnips, asparagus, pickled blackberries, and a slow gin sauce.
Your monk jack is cooked to absolute perfection. There's a little bit of bitterness around the outside of it, and that monk jack is like a, a deeper venison. Really good. Your sauce has got real depth. You can see the shine on it, but the star of that show is that pie. I think the pie is absolutely delicious. The, the pastry is fantastic. It's got it's crunchy on the outside. It's not soft underneath, uh, and, and the center of it is, is beautiful. It's cooked to perfection. I'm so pleased you've made it the way it is. It is so beautiful. The vegetables have been prepared well. I think great second round. I'm absolutely over the moon. So with the, the comments I got, I feel great. You know, hopefully that's enough to get me through to the next round. I really hope so. Alice's dish is chai tea and wood-smoked duck breast, confit duck leg wrapped in phyllo pastry, leeks, shredded beetroot, red cabbage, and pak choy salad with a spiced blackberry dressing and a blackberry and duck jus. I like the way you've cooked the duck breast pink. I can smell a little bit of, of smoke, but I, 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 can't, I can't taste it. I like the confit leg inside the phyllo pastry. It's sweet, like cinnamon sweet. I think you needed more phyllo pastry wrapping around uh, the duck leg. Um, I think for me, the, the beetroot salad and, and the duck was, was delicious. The sauce is far too sweet. Uh, it's got an, it doesn't have a nice consistency to it. You've lost the flavour of the duck. It doesn't work for me. Obviously, some elements of it didn't work out fine, but there were some good things on the plate. Next is Curtis, whose signature dish is oak-smoked lamb cannon and lamb belly with deep-fried sesame-glazed aubergine, aubergine puree, pistachio and sesame seed crumb, served with a bonito or fermented tuna, vinegar jus. I like how the lamb has been cooked here. It's lovely and pink, and the belly was delicious. The, the little aubergines with the, the pistachio are lovely, but there's not enough of it. I'm not getting the smokiness of, of the lamb. Uh, the aubergine puree and the aubergine that's been sort of panned in the nuts, they're almost very similar, they're very soft inside. Uh, so the dish is lacking textures. But what's really holding it together is the sauce. It's beautifully made, got a good flavour running through it. The bonito is giving real saltiness, but not, not like a table salt, you know, a, a bigger depth than that. You've got some interesting ideas mixing these European techniques with Asian flavours. It's very interesting. I feel I've done enough to make myself happy. I guess uh, you have to take a risk if you're on a competition, so... Matt's signature dish is chicken breast with black garlic, topped with crispy chicken skin sitting on a bed of leek puree, a scorched leek, topped with shredded leg meat, pickled jalapeno puree, crispy chicken skin and chives, served with a chicken jus. To get that really meaty, soft, braised chicken leg, and then to get the sharp heat of a jalapeno pepper in it was a real surprise and a real, real delight. The chicken is nicely cooked. It's moist, it hasn't dried out. It could do with a bit more seasoning. The leek puree is very light and I wish it had a bit more of, oomph of the flavour of, of the leek. The black garlic, I thought would bring something to the chicken breast, but for me, it hasn't because the black garlic has just gone under raw. So the main element of the dish doesn't really shine and the sauce is split out onto the plate. The sauce lets it down, Matt. I would say I haven't covered myself in glory today. Um, it's not been horrendous, but it's definitely not uh, the image I wanted to project. Georgie's signature dish is cannon of lamb with a goat's cheese croquette, pea puree, peas, beetroot, Madeira sauce and a mint oil.
the lamb is a little overcooked for my liking. I like the, the croquette with the goat's cheese. The pea puree, taste of pea, it could be a bit smoother. The beer is beautifully cooked. You know, the beer it is beautifully cooked. And the sauce looks great, what little bits on the plate, but unfortunately I can't taste any of it because there's just not enough. OK. Everything you've put on the plate, I love. I just want a load more flavour. I want more seasoning, I want more butter, and I most certainly want more of that sweet Madeira sauce. I sort of knew that things weren't perfect, um, but, you know, I'd hoped that it would be better. Finally, it's Ben, who has made Jerusalem artichoke bavoir, topped with raspberry jelly, Italian meringue, sourdough crumble with pickled and toasted hazelnuts, and fresh and salted raspberries and strawberries, served with a thyme oil and birch syrup. I think this is quite remarkable, and I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I've got sugary meringue, and I've got strawberry and raspberries that are sweet and sharp. I've then got some of them that are salty. My mouth is bouncing back between natural soft fruits and Jerusalem artichoke, and I find the whole thing delightful. The artichoke bavoir is without a doubt a sort of a star within the dish of sweetness. The raspberry jelly on top is delicious. There's enough flavours here to work and marry everything together. The bavoir has a sweetness through it. The texture is, is for me, is just there. I like the crumble, and there's a bit of saltiness coming through it. Yet, then you've got all this meringue up there. It's so sweet, too sweet for me. All in all, I was very happy with it. I don't think I'm going to please everyone all the time, but I mean, two out of three, it's not too bad. I think there's some very interesting combinations of ingredients here today, uh, and some surprises as well. Andrew, for me, was the chef that really topped it today in the signature round. There was nothing on the plate that you didn't like. It all worked in harmony. The pie, outstanding. Outstanding piece of skill. Andrew going straight through to the next round, I think, is the easiest decision of the day. After that, I think we've got five chefs who have obvious strengths and, obviously, weaknesses. Curtis, he's got interesting points of Asian flavours that, that, that's different. He put benito vinegar into his sauce. I really like that. I like the aubergine, the puree, the little aubergine balls, but they're just textures were too similar. Let's talk about Alice. I thought she'd cooked that duck breast really well. I love the confit leg inside the phyllo pastry. Apart from that, the sauce wasn't very well made at all. It was so sweet, and you didn't need any more sweetness because we had a bit of sweetness through the, the, the salad, and there were also berries uh, on the plate. I'd like to talk about Matt. Bringing flavours like jalapeno into an otherwise classic European dish, I thought was clever. Although not perfect, I really liked that chicken dish. But I'm not sure he did the chicken breast justice, to be honest with you. I felt that the black garlic was flavourless. It didn't add anything to the dish. Wasn't a big fan of that sauce either. Now, Georgie gave us lamb, mint and peas. It was a pleasant dish, and with the ingredients she had chosen, it should have been a fantastic dish. There wasn't enough butter and seasoning. There wasn't enough sauce on the plate. The lamb, for me, I would have liked it a little less cooked as well. Ben gave us the dessert of real difference and some very unusual flavour pairings. It was skillful, it was tasty, it had texture to it, it was interesting in so many different ways. I like the idea of the bavoir with the Jerusalem artichoke, but I found the meringue really sweet. But you guys loved it. I think I was taking a brisk with the dish. Touch wood, hopefully it has paid off. Um, I'm hoping I have done enough to get through to the next round, but you never know, it would mean a lot to me. I don't think I've cooked the best of my ability, and I'd love to have the opportunity to prove that I can do this. 
don't think I could have done much more. I would be overwhelmed to cook for him again. If I got through today, I would be really happy, obviously, but um, both of the two tests, I didn't really shine. We saw some interesting, innovative and surprising dishes here in this kitchen. That's exactly what we're meant to see. However, we're going to have to lose three of you today. The first chef leaving us. Is Alice. The second chef leaving the competition is Georgie. Thank you. Thank you. The third chef leaving us is Matt. Matt, thank you very much. Good to have met you. I just didn't really give a good account of myself, unfortunately. I gave it a good go, but, um, but yeah, just a, a few things that I think definitely let me down today. Um, I feel like I didn't really showcase uh, what I can do. I'll just take this as a fuel that you need to do better, you need to learn more, so that's definitely something that would, I would work on. I have really enjoyed today, but I think I might leave it a while before I try and enter another competition. Congratulations. You three are quarterfinalists. I'm massively proud of myself. I just keep going with my ideas, and hopefully it works out. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm shocked. I'm so happy. It means a lot. I've invested 12 years of my life into being a chef, and it's good to know that I'm on the right path. I'm doing the right thing. Next time, six more professionals compete for a place in the quarterfinal. Right now, I'm not too sure if I'm doing the right thing. I don't like this at all. It's rubbish. Interesting ideas. You are intriguing. You've absolutely nailed the dish for me. I think it's sensational. <laughs>